The rope pulls is the fact that you've got to win early, and they have won early. They beat Oregon on a neutral site that was nationally ranked. They went to Wichita State, this Mizzou team did, and won on the road. And then they beat an Illinois team that may be a Final Four type squad at home. They're a great team with depth. They've got good defense. And they're matched up tonight with a Tennessee team that has great depth and one of the best defensive teams in the country. So we may see a lot about the defense, but let's see which team really cranks it up on the offensive end because the backcourts are terrific for both squads. Could really do no wrong. It's like picking between Murray's green pepper rings and dead ends burn ends. Missouri wins the tip. The Tigers in the home white at Mizzou Arena. A Missouri team coming off of a lackluster win against Bradley three days before Christmas. Won by just one. Jeremiah Tillman won it for Missouri at the buzzer. Tennessee coming off of a 20-point win. There's Vescovi. Santiago Vescovi starts off with a three. A very balanced Tennessee team. Missouri willing to run. And Abel and Drew Smith with the answer. Let's take a look at the starters for the Volunteers. Brought to you by Farm Rich. As balanced as starting five as you'll see. And oh, oh, by the way, they bring a pair of five stars off the bench. Active hands early by this uh, Tennessee team caused the first turnover and they get an open bucket. Missouri, again, again, one of the better defensive teams. Right inside, they'll have active hands themselves. Hans with the turnaround. There are more lefties in Tennessee's starting lineup than Mike Matheny had on the Royals staff all of last season. All five are southpaws. Great matchup out front would be Victor Bailey Jr. on Pinson. Pinson is the guy that makes Mizzou go. We'll talk about a lot of people, but if he goes well, the, the Mizzou will score a lot of points. Kobe Brown off the mark, knocked out of bounds by Tillman. He had a chance to visit with Rick Barnes today. First road trip for this Tennessee team. You know, team coaches are never comfortable, but I, I question Rick on the fact that I think this team has a chance to be better that the team with Grant Williams and Admiral Schofield, et cetera, because I think their quickness is better. He looked at me and he said, well, I sure hope we're that good. It's early. He thought this matchup tonight would give them a better barometer of where they are. What a great start for the balls. Victor Bailey, whose dad played across the street at Faroe Field, drains a shot. And early pressure will force Conzo Martin to use an early timeout, or did they get a five-second call? Conzo asked for the timeout. Looked like they got it. Fourth season as a head coach at Mizzou, of course, a good but short run at Tennessee where he took the balls to the Sweet 16. Purdue grad who played his high school ball with our buddy LaFonso Ellis. So number seven, Tennessee, and number 12, Missouri. And here's what Missouri's been up to this year. First 6-0 start in six seasons. Second best strength of record according to ESPN BPI. You mentioned the wins against Oregon and Illinois. Also went to Wichita State and got a win on the road. And the Smiths have each won SEC player of the week. That's all well and good. But what does Missouri need to do, Sonny, tonight to be successful against the premier team in the league? Tom, they've got to shoot the ball well. They've got to take care of the basketball. Last year, what hurt this Tiger team? Too many turnovers in a certain game. Other times they didn't shoot the ball well. Well, they've not shot the ball well the last couple ball games. I was talking to Kimmy English, the assistant for the volunteers today, and he said, well, we've got to keep them uncomfortable shooting the ball. If Mizzou shoots it well outside, it opens everything up. Tillman with the paint touch, working on Fulkerson. A oh, pump fake and Pond still got him. E. Pond's a sensational shot blocker. He's a rim protector at 6'6". He can erase uh, any mistake that a teammate makes. And he comes from all angles. He hangs, he glides, knocks it down, oh. knocks it off Tillman's leg. What a play. I was talking with Conzo Martin this afternoon. I said, who's the key for Tennessee on the defensive end? He said, E. Pons. I said, who's the guy you got to shut down on the offensive end? He said, E. Pons. I said, wait, both sides of the floor? <laughs> Well, you know he Pons won't shoot him. You know he won't shoot at a bunch outside. He'll get to the rim. He'll get tip ins. He's so active. But I think Tom, what makes this Vols team so good is they are active on both ends of the floor. They won't get enough credit on the offensive end, but they've got enough firepower, especially with the guys coming off the bench, to produce a lot of points. Now, 98 career blocks for E. Pons out of France. 
a Renaissance man, plays the saxophone, he's a chef, he's a photographer. And Jeremiah Tillman, also a shot blocker, rejected what looked like a pass from Escobi. It'll be Missouri basketball. Tigers have started just one for three from the floor. Good hands by Tillman, but not a good play by Viscovi. He's now going into a seven-footer. You're not going to throw it over the top. Take one more dribble, throw it around, or just throw a little lob to the rim. Not a good play. Good defensive hands by Tillman. Here's Pinson. No screen for him. Working on Bailey. Xavier Pinson takes it to the rim. And an early foul on Victor Bailey, Jr. And Pinson is the explosive player. Loves to go right, not all the time, but he will fake you left. And he will punch the ball quickly right and has the ability to score at the rim after contact. When he got into the starting lineup last year when Mark Smith went out, the last 13 games, seven last year, six this year, they're 10 and three. He's averaged nearly 18 points a ball. He is really what makes this Tiger team go in the offensive end. Couldn't finish the three-point play. Tennessee has doubled up on Mizzou early, and then Kobe Brown with a near steal on the feed to Bailey. Tennessee, a high-scoring team for being such a great offensive team. Their scoring margin this season, better than 28 points a game. They score 81, they give up about 53. It's tied with, or was tied with Ole Miss. They're now number one in the country. In defensive points allowed. Fulkerson cut off. Viscovi lost it on the drive, taken away by Drew Smith. Drew Smith, one of the best defenders in the SEC, has got great hands. Active. Open floor foul on Viscovi. I see Rick Barnes depth here early. He's going to go to a couple of five star recruits, Jaden Springer and Keon Johnson, off the bench. I think the excitement about this basketball game, obviously it's the first for these two teams in the SEC. It kind of sets a tone. These are the two ranked teams from this league is the fact that we know they're good defensively, but they're both explosive offensively. They score at a good pace. They run the ball up and down the floor. It's entertaining to watch. Mitchell Smith on the floor for Missouri, an early reach for Keon Johnson. You're always interested to see a guy like Keon Johnson comes in the ball game, a five-star freshman, as you said, and Jaden Springer. Will veteran guards like Drew Smith try to take advantage, if they can, of their experience? That time, Drew Smith put a little pressure and got the first foul on Keon Johnson. And then Missouri gave it, gave it up. Who would you be concerned with in the half court if you're trying to slow down Tennessee? Well, I think what's curious now with the two freshmen we said come in, don't be surprised if they post either one up early against a smaller defensive team of Missouri. Their guards aren't as tall as these two freshmen guards. And Springer goes right over the top for his first bucket, averaging 11 and a half per game. Balls of five in double figures on the season. And Springer just took it off the dribble, got to the paint. These two guards, the freshmen, will get the ball where they want to, but I expect Rick Barnes to just post them straight up against some of the guards from Missouri. Mitchell Smith picks up the loose ball way off the mark. What is remarkable about this Tennessee team, even the five-star guys, is that every one of them plays in-your-face defense, and here they are picking up full court. Yeah, they're terrific. Uh, you know, you're always questioned, will two five-star kids always be on the bench? And you know Rick Barnes, he'll tell you right to their face, and anybody's face, well, they've got to earn their minutes to play here. But that's the program he's built, and that's why they're nationally ranked year in, year out. Tennessee with an early 12 for advantage. Balls haven't missed a shot. A perfect five for five to start. Spears run today. <laughs> that is, that's a fair question. I mean, I got called out earlier about the green pepper rings at Murray's. I could go there. I could go Shakespeare's. I could go Booch's. Instead, medium meal uh, was right upstairs. 12 for Tennessee. On top of Missouri, uh, Sonny, you were talking about the freshman for this Tennessee team, and 
in regard to Rick Barnes, he demands that you earn playing time. Will they earn that on the offensive end or the defensive end? Well, let's go to the defensive end first. Every guy under Rick Barnes is going to earn it on the defensive end. You take a look at the recruiting class that Walker's been injured. Springer and Johnson, two guys that uh, can go on both ends of the floor. They love, they're gym rats, they love to play. Solid on the defensive end. Uh, I, I was talking to Rick Barnes, and he said, you know, John, like many young guys, they are really good on-ball defenders. Where they at times get lost is off the ball. When their guy's cutting or something, their head gets turned the wrong way. But they will blend in. It is not as though they don't have some talented guys in front of them starting. And when you're playing with a veteran squad and what the balls and Rick Barnes has built over the last few years, starting with Grant Williams and that group, mm. is a tremendous team concept. And on the offensive end, they don't really care who scores. They'll get a bunch of different guys in double figures. Uh, they don't run the traditional, just pick the high guy up top. They run a lot of motion on the offensive end. Uh, it's an impressive group. They've had an impressive start. Granted, they didn't get, get to play Gonzaga or on the road to Notre Dame, but once they played the Colorado game, they played often and they played well. Gonzo's gone deep in his bench. Drew Bugs and Parker Brown both on the floor. Same result for Tennessee, a six for six start. So here's, yeah, Keon, John and here's Keon Johnson at 6'5". He just goes over the top. He's a great athlete. He's a name you're going to see. You already see it on pre-NBA drafts for next year to be drafted. I mean, he's the guy that's in the middle of the pack, maybe top 15. Pinson with the screen from Smith. Got switched to Springer. Off the mark. Conzo today saying Xavier Pinson's got to learn where the best shot is for this team and decision making coming off those screens. He's a better shooter strictly spotting up as opposed to on the move. That's Springer now for early. Tennessee's still perfect. Yeah, they would love, Tennessee would love for Pinson to shoot jump shots, long range jump shots. He's not a great outside shooter. Can get on a roll. But look at where Tennessee is getting their shots. Everything's in the paint. Short jump shots, four footers, five footers, easy shots. Missouri can't keep them out of the lane. Tigers settling for another long one and a push off inside. Tennessee on an eight nothing run. Tom, what I noticed last night, uh, I was watching the Old Miss Alabama game. When you play that first game in conference, uh, sometimes the adrenaline maybe for older guys is too much. I mean, there's too much excitement. I thought Ole Miss last night was too excited. Uh, the senior guard, Shulman, they, they just did too many things. And right now, Missouri needs to settle down a bit, get a defensive stop, at least one stop at some point, and, and get their veteran guards to take over. If you're not, right now, Tennessee's very comfortable every possession. First miss came out of Anna Sicky miss. Parker Brown challenging, challenging again. And Pond's able to clean up. Quick and explosive, every one of these ball members. They, they are tough. And I don't think you realize the quickness till you play against it. They're one of the best, not only defensive teams, they can run this floor and get high quality shots. Came in ninth in the country in field goal percentage allowed, number one in the country in points per game allowed. Hans will get a breather. Kobe Brown returns from a zoo. Urosh Plavcic has entered for Tennessee and Bailey back on the floor. Not take that back. He was just sitting down. Brown was looking for Tillman. And he's got John Fulkerson draped on him. Straight up man to man defensively. Each guy pretty good on the ball. Can you get, can you swing the ball? Can you make it move? Can you make body moves? Can you have hard cuts? If you stay on the ball against a volunteer, meaning one guy bounces it until he can't bounce it, then he swings it to the next guy, they'll eat you alive. They are so good on the basketball. Guys know where you're talk, coming from. They talk, they help out each other. Another turnover for Missouri. Interesting hearing Rick Barnes talk about it. He talked about staying out of rotation. So they don't get it out of position when it comes to the glass. And if you don't need to help your teammate, you won't get caught out of position, huh? No, that's right. I mean, it's interesting. This is their first road trip. And he just simply said, we're going to stick with what we do. We're going to travel how we travel. We're going where we want to go. 
uh, he likes this team. He's confident in this team. Like I said before, like any coach, though, he worries about little things here and there. But this is a fun team to watch, and they are putting on a show early in this game. First empty possession for the Volunteers. Their two misses came on one possession. And they turn it over. What about Missouri in the half court? I asked Conzo what they needed to do to be more efficient. He said, well, I'm pretty happy with where we are offensively. We've only really had one bad offensive game. That was last time out against Bradley. They shot 25%. It's the first time they won a game shooting that low in 20 years. Yeah, you win it down the stretch even though they didn't play well. But when you think of Missouri and what they've had all year, Pinson, Drew Smith, Mark Smith. Mark Smith hasn't had any opening so far. They haven't been able to find him. Tillman's got to have better hands. If that ball he's got to catch, Pinson makes a move. But you're going to rely on those three guys, the two Smiths and Pinson, the guard core, to get it going. Right now they're quiet. Tennessee 8 of 10 from the floor with two offensive rebounds. Seven points off of five Missouri turnovers. I think it's the variety of weapons and how they can score offensively for the balls that make them so effective. They've got good shooters outside, strong guys inside. This guy, one of the best shooters in the country. Santiago Vescovi, new hair color, same jumper. He's got two threes here early. He hit six in his Vols debut coming over from Uruguay last year. I asked someone today how old, because sometimes a foreign kid, you don't know how old they are. He's 19 years yeah. old, just turned 19. And he's playing in an NBA developmental league in Mexico. When a spot opened up to join Tennessee. What a start for the Volunteers. Vescovi shooting 41% from deep on this season. He's knocked down both of his attempts from deep tonight. Kentucky and Mississippi State Saturday, 6 o'clock on the SEC Network. Sonny, Kentucky's trying to figure it out. They had a closed-door scrimmage with Transylvania last night. D3 school right there in Lexington. Jack Calipari squad off to a very slow start. They get a Mississippi State team that had an impressive win on the road against Georgia earlier tonight. How did uh, how that scrimmage go? Do we know the, the score of that scrimmage? Uh, they are they keeping it quiet? <laughs> yeah, they're kind of trying to keep it. They won. They won. Uh, Dante <laughs> Allen's a guy that they're trying to get on the floor. He hit seven threes. He's a Kentucky native that uh, hadn't really seen the floor for Tennessee much this year. And then yeah, you and I will have Kentucky and Vandy uh, actually get to go to Rupp on Tuesday. Yeah, and, and I have them this Saturday. And, and I'll just be honest, and you know this, there won't be anybody feeling sorry for the Kentucky team. And when they go to Starkville, you got Molinar had a good game. D.J. Stewart's been playing great. Uh, ben Holland's got a terrific team. It, it's hard to look at some of these teams that have not played as much. I mean, we've never mentioned South Carolina because they haven't had many games, but they're still a team that could be good. But Kentucky's going to get better. They'll slowly get better, and I think their guys uh, will put it together sooner or later. Kentucky was able to play that scrimmage midweek. They were supposed to be playing South Carolina. Frank Martin's team has only played three games to this point. They've only practiced a handful of times. He had them back on the floor yesterday, and he's really concerned, John, with getting his team back into basketball shape and conditioning because the guys on his squad who have been quarantined they're stuck in two bedroom apartments it's not like they can go out there and even run the hallways because university policy in South Carolina is so strict Kobe Brown with the foul his first I was supposed to have South Carolina last week and, and obviously that was canceled but AJ Lawson uh, Cousinard Keyshawn Bryant they've got a terrific team if they ever get to get back on the floor Fulkerson takes a bump, and Tillman will be charged with his first. And John Fulkerson will go to the free throw line. Great article this week in the Knoxville News Sentinel Sportsman of the Year. Fifth year senior from Kingsport, Tennessee. Knocks down the first. 
An interesting matchup with him and Tillman tonight. We're talking with both of them over the last couple of weeks. They've both admitted as seniors that their games have evolved over the years. Fulkerson came on when he first showed up from North Carolina as a good shot blocker, but he envisioned himself being more of a stretch four and a guy who could step out and shoot 22 footers. Uh, don't we? Don't we all think we're stretch fours <laughs> until you until you get out there and figure out you're not? But what he did at the end of last season, his final ten games, he averaged 18 points a game, good enough to put him on the second team of the SEC All SEC Conference, and he's picked to be a first team this year. He's not scored a lot of points yet, but with all the weapons they have offensively, he doesn't need to score. I think he'll have his moments. Uh, he plays with. Uh, great passion for the game. He's a great teammate. He rebounds. He defends. He can score the ball, and he make he puts a lot of pressure on a defensive team like Tillman right now. Going right back at him, and you think that Rick Barnes is probably thinking, "Let's feed him. Let's get Tillman too early." But Tillman, with the block there, stood his ground and didn't get the foul. You know, Tillman is a guy for Conzo Martin that uh, solid this time defensively has not fouled as much this year. And when you talk to Conzo Martin, he says, hey, I need him for 18 to 20 really good minutes. Five-minute bursts. If he can dominate a different four- or five-minute section of a game, then Mizzou is really good. Here's Kobe Brown. Tough reverse last time there. Down, not there that time. Smith bails him out. Shot clock at six. High off the glass, and Pons affected that one, even though he didn't get a hand on it. Yeah, you have to know where Pons is coming from, and I, the shot clock was running down. But wherever Pons leaves, his guy has to be available for a pass. Kobe Brown to take away. Missouri's got to find a bucket, Tom, but they've had not very good looks. Good drive that time. Sophomore from Rocket City, Huntsville, Alabama, Kobe Brown. Where's that number 24 for his idol, the late Kobe Bryant? I think he's got a chance to be a terrific SEC player. He has had a little bit of foul trouble in his sophomore season. He had 26 starts last year as a freshman, very comfortable in that starting lineup for Council Mark. Focusing off the mark, Brown fouled over the back pines. Kobe Brown can make jump shots outside, so you have to honor him. Folky came up now. Good spin move. This is what they envision a, a Kobe Brown to do, especially this sophomore season, to expand his game. 6'7", 240, solid body, solid defender, good outside shooter. Not a great one yet, but a good outside shooter, so you have to honor what he does. But I think Konzo is looking for bigger production from him than he's had so far. He's averaging seven points a game. Well, very little production out of the Missouri backcourt so far. Bugs, a transfer, trying to get in on it. Pons, another block. Wow. It, amazing. The quickness of his hands. Interesting you say hands. Most people first go to the fact that he gets up so quick, but you're saying it's what it's at the end of his arms that does it. Well, if you don't have the quickness of hands and the ability to see where he's going, he's on the backside of a 6'11 guy. I mean, there's no way he should make this block. But the quickness of his hands allows him to hit, hit that basketball so quickly that Mitchell Smith can't hold on to it. 100th career block for Eve Pines. Interesting, Tom. Tennessee scored easily early in this game. Now they've tried to pound it inside, and it's become tougher. I think they've become a little more stagnant on the offensive end. They were better with more movement and not worried about just feeding that post. Foul on Mark Smith, his first. The junior from Edwardsville, Illinois, will exit. Bailey in the corner. And he stepped on the sideline. Opportunity is there. The window is there for Missouri, Sonny, but they just haven't made shots 24% on the night. Yeah, got to find a way to get good. The shot, the quality of shots aren't good. I mean, it's one thing to put it on the floor and get to the rim, but if you're just tossing it up and, and, and 
shooting off balance shots. They've got to get more movement on the offensive end, find guys to get open. Pinson's obviously out of the lineup. You, you've got Pickett down on the low end. He's kind of a place towards the basket. That's not a high quality shot. Missouri, a poor three point shooting team, just 28% on the season. And it's represented tonight by an 0 for 5 from deep. And now Springer draws the foul. Anytime you've played a few games, and obviously Missouri has played six, you're scouting. Uh, in the Oregon game, it was a guy like Mark Smith that shot the three ball well. Oregon did not get to him. And since then, he had a good shooting game against Wichita State. But you're scouted, so now they cover up Mark Smith, most defensive, make him put it on the floor. He's back in. How do teammates get another guy open, right? If, if Mark Smith's a great shooter, when they run stuff, a teammate's got to figure out a way to get him open because then he can expand this, the offensive end for Missouri and maybe get a good look or two. Springer goes one for two. Tillman almost knocked it in. Hey, you're talking about scouting. Conzo had a fascinating answer when asked by a local reporter if they spent much time going over the Tennessee tape against teams that they dominated, USC Upstate and Tennessee Tech and Appalachian State and the like. And he goes, well, hold on a second. You can actually learn a lot because those overmatched teams have to put a lot of thought into what they need to do differently to be successful. If you're facing a team that's, that you're evenly matched against, they're just going to do what they do. But the overmatched squad have to get really creative, and you can pick something up. You can learn from what they want to do against an opponent. Well, coaches work all the time. I, my brother's a coach. I mean, I mean, coaches work all the time, and they're studying every angle they can about an opponent. The hard part for coaches is can they relay that message to the 18 and 22-year-old guys that they're coaching? That's the toughest part of the game. And can their guys get it on the floor? Good hands by Drew Smith. Bailey thought he was fouled twice. He may have been. Smith was on him. When he received it, Olivier Kamwa commits a foul on Tillman on the block. You find out quickly when you get in the SEC play, especially the new faces, uh, that the whistle won't be blown as often. And a little tap and a little slap here or there, there may not be a call as there was a week ago when you're playing uh, a team of a lesser league. Tillman has yet to score 46% from the free throw line on the season. He's given Missouri eight points and eight boards a game. Had a great conversation with him a couple weeks ago about that foul trouble that he always got in as an underclassman. He's basically shelved that at this point. And he said, well, number one, I was immature, but it came from an area of toughness. I thought that was my lane, and I needed to foul anybody who came in there. It was a bit short-sighted, even though it may have come from a competitive <laughs> spirit. Well, I, you know what? He won the Bradley game, right? They, they, gave him the, they gave him the ball at the end of the game. He finishes the play. He gets fouled, and at under 50%, he still made the free throw. He just made two there. Uh, he's going to probably have a terrific senior season and needs to for Missouri to have a good SEC run. Tennessee scoreless over the last four minutes, but Xavier Pinson commits the foul. And Epons will be at the free throw line when we return. It's Tennessee 24, Mizzou 12. SEC women's action swings your way tomorrow on the SEC Network. Number 12, Mississippi State, matching up with 8-0 Georgia. Sets at 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central. The number 10, Arkansas, taking on 13th-ranked Kentucky at Memorial Coliseum. All games, as always, available on the ESPN app. Shuffling some games around on the women's side already. And um, I think we'll see that throughout the, the men's season as well, Sonny. If there's a team that can't go or needs time to get back, you might see some games moved around. Got to be flexible. Pons has another one coming. Knocks down the front end of the one and one. And every coach that, uh, Tom, you've talked to or I've talked to, they've all talked about flexibility. Uh, when, when can they practice? When can't they practice? Do they have to shut down for a day or two or certain players have to sit out? Uh, obviously, Tennessee had a tough start. They couldn't find games. They couldn't 
scheduled games to make up some. The first one was Colorado, which was a probably a good job by Kim English, who used to coach out of Colorado. Tad Boyle, they got that game started. But yeah, finding teams to play before conference starts, getting you ready for conference has been tough for some squads. Bad foul by Kobe Brown. Not only is it his second, but he didn't stop Springer from scoring, and now it's a three-point opportunity for the freshman from Charlotte. Explosive uh, to the rim every time he touches the basketball. Son of another player, his his dad Gary Sr. played at Iona mm -hmm. back in the day, right before, I think he got there right after Jim Valvano left. Yes, folks, Jim Valvano was at Iona College, coached a great player in Jeff Rulin before he went to North Carolina State. And Springer's dad, Gary, played at Iona, terrific player. Uh, Jaden has a bro had a brother, Gary Jr., played at Iona. His brother, Jordan, played at Army. So it comes from a family of basketball people. And, and that's a huge deal when a coach like Rick Barnes gets a hold of him. His dad, Gary, was the seventh-round pick of the Sixers in 1984. Happened to be the same draft. They took a guy out of Auburn by the name of Charles Barkley in the first round. Tom, I got a Here's call a from Jim. I got a call from Jim Valvano in high school, and he said, "Jim Valvano, I own a college." I said, "You own a what?" He said, "I own a college, son." I said, well, "Nice to meet you. I don't know where that is." Played him. Hey, played him four years later when he was at North Carolina State. Oh, that's I own fantastic. a college. I own a what? Oh, congratulations, sir. Yeah, congratulations to you. Rick Barnes owns a golf course. I think I'd rather own a golf course. I'll tell you what, Rick owns a heck of a ball club this year. I've not had anybody look it up, Tom, but it uh, would you could you guess how many teams have ever had two five star players come off the bench? I can't imagine. The, the only thing I would think back to would be Calipari's team recently when he had Booker and company coming off the bench as uh, platoon guys. Yeah, maybe but right. even then, or, I don't know that they had two five stars. Yeah, or in the old days when you had such, you know, guys didn't go out early so many times. Some of these good, you know, university programs, you might have a couple big-time recruits that uh, had to sit and play a while, but <laughs> very rare. Well, one of them, Keon Johnson, trying to catch his breath, kind of a mess of bodies at the end of that play. And Missouri will have an opportunity from the free throw line. Mitchell Smith. Wearing a graduate patch on his jersey now. Graduated at semester. Fifth year senior out of Van Buren, Arkansas. Broke a 35 year old scoring record his senior year. He has been a valuable piece for Conzo Martin. And, and I think what Conzo Martin has done for Mitchell Smith has given him the confidence of what he can contribute on the floor. Uh, he can defend multiple positions because he's long and athletic, handles a basketball, shoots it decently, can score at times, but he has given Mitchell the confidence to do it, and Smith has uh, rewarded Martin for having valuable minutes. Fulkerson lost his footing. He might be hurt. Still hasn't gotten up. It's his, it's his right arm or his wrist that he hurt, likely when he lost his footing and went down. He's already got that thumb and wrist taped, and I think he jammed it when he mm. fell coming across the lane. Take a look a little side and watch when he goes down. It looks like the wrist, the thumb give out. And he put that hand down. But Tom, I'll tell you this. When you're a red shirt senior, he's not coming out, right? There's no, no. sense. I don't need to go sit on the side by coach because I can handle it out here. It's all about minutes. The folks that are in the building were booing a moment ago because Rick Barnes took the opportunity to come all the way out near midcourt to instruct his guys. Folkers in with the shot clock winding down and he drills it right over the top of Tillman. They'll take a look to make sure he got it off. And Missouri fans are uh, familiar with Rick Barnes. He had a fabulous career at Texas 
When they were in the Big 12 with Missouri, played at the old Hearns building in at Missouri Arena. A little step back, looked like it was good. Hard to tell, but Rick Barnes has great memories. I think back on his 2003 Final Four team, TJ Ford and Royale Ivy. He has been one of the best for many, many years. He's got a great staff around him. Michael Schwartz has been with him forever. Desmond Oliver, Kim English, who you got to see, one of the former Missouri greats. Tony Green has the headset on. Checking. Yeah, that's out of his hand. Yep. Pretty good way to finish a play after you you were injured. So you're wondering if you're you, you do you question him were you playing possum on that thing kid or what? Yeah. Yeah like a football game where they say no no get down you've got to cramp. <laughs> They're running with tempo you got to cramp. Uh, shot good and it's a two they check both at the monitor the veteran. Tony Green. Fulkerson with four here early on. He brought, uh, broke Marshall Plumley's school record with 113 blocks his final year at Christ School in North Carolina after growing up in Eastern Tennessee in Kingsport. A little 1 2 2 pressure that Rick Barnes is going to experiment with at different times. If it works, he'll stay with it, but he's got an active team. He thinks he can put a little different pressure on teams in the SEC. Josiah Jordan James with the steal. They are suffocating on the defensive end. Here's James. Pons now. And he's got to get rid of it. And Pons is not a natural type score. He'll get a bucket here or there, but it's not natural. Doesn't shoot that much outside. Tillman running the floor. Good wow. body control by the big guy. Tough finish for a 6'10 guy, 260 pounds running the floor. Good catch. Better bucket. Missouri shooting just 26 percent Tennessee at 61 percent in this one. Hines will rise. Great elevation. Sorry. Sorry Tom about my last comment that he wasn't an after <laughs> score. That looked pretty good. We sure as heck didn't hear you. You're not courtside. You're about three and a half miles away from the arena. I did. I did see both teams today. I went over. It's rare for us to get to see teams nowadays when we work out of our basement. Mark Smith with the bank shot. Three and a half. Did I get that about right? Yeah, probably so. About a six-minute drive. So figure that with a stop or two in between. Well, if that's the case, you're only. 668 miles closer than I am. <laughs> Bailey turns it over. He's turned it over three times here early on for Tennessee. Back where his dad went to college after starting his college football career in El Paso at Utah. Yeah, one of the great receivers uh, all time from Missouri Tigers. Didn't win a lot of games in the years he was playing, but uh, his dad was one of the best. Mom, an Olympic sprinter. They double up on Tillman. Kobe Brown. Wow, uh, gotta take that shot. Indecisive, and he ends up getting it blocked by Pons, I believe, again. So the jump ball will take it the other way. Tennessee 33 to 17. Ball shooting 63% in the first half. What's up, y'all? Peter Burns coming up at half. Hogs stay perfect. Uh, big game for them and also Mississippi State. Big game out in Athens and first half reaction to this one. But Tom and John, I want to ask you a question. More points scored, Alabama versus Notre Dame or the winner of this Tennessee-Mizzou game? Oh, that, that's a great one. <laughs> I, <laughs> more points scored. I, okay, oh, Sonny, oh, wow. I'll yeah. jump on it first. I think the way Go Tennessee ahead. is playing today, it's going to be Tennessee because they're already halfway to 60, and we're not quite out of the first half. 63% from the floor. They've already had a 15 to nothing run, and they, they've been, it sounds odd to say, but you pointed it out that they got a little stagnant on the offensive end at one point this half. 
Yeah, it's it's surprising to think that they're shooting 63 percent, and and you would think it will go down, right? You don't maintain that. But watching this game, Missouri is having a hard time taking away anything that the Vols want to do on the offensive end. So they're getting what they want. When they bog down, I thought it's when they just simply said, we're going to throw it in the post and see what we can get out of it. That seemed to slow them down. They, they're not a great most post offensive team. I know Rick Barnes traditionally has always played from inside to outside so the ball moves, but I think their body movement earlier was better. But uh, I, the pace they're going, it's going to be pretty good. A lot of different guys who can start the offense, don't they? Yeah, it helps uh, when they get defensive stops, rebounds, steals. They push it, and now Pinson back in. He's got to have a better. He's got to have a better few minutes to end this half than he's had early in this game. Uh, if you're if you're a Missouri fan, if you're a Missouri player, and the coaching staff, they want a good little three-minute run. Get a couple stops, get a few buckets, just get this thing more manageable and get them more excited at halftime. Against this defense, Missouri hadn't been able to get to the rim. It's a, you know, it's I, was, a I was hoping I was hoping my dinner was being cooked upstairs, but that was my wife and daughter and another no. friend at the game. Was it, was it really? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's pretty good. Looks like I'm on my own at halftime, Tom. Huh? Yeah, I hope she didn't leave the stove on. <laughs> Junior from Chicago pinched in, gets them both to roll home. Vescovi's taken two shots. He's hit two threes. He's probably their best shooter. They don't necessarily run stuff for him. They would like him to shoot a little more. Pons has forced a couple shots up last two possessions. Bailey getting in on the fun. It's his second three. And Victor Bailey can be a volume type player. I mean, he, he can go hunt some shots. He can score. Uh, he's, he's, he doesn't score effectively all the time, but he'll hunt him down. And when he gets on a little roll, again, it's another offensive weapon for this team. Tillman spun into the double team, lucky to draw the foul. And that'll be on Pons. Second on Eve Pons. I like the move by Tillman, and here's here's why. I, I did a few games earlier in Missouri, and, and Tillman, because his free throw percentage was down, was not aggressive with the ball. Most bad free throw shooters, you don't want to get there. Uh, with his make the other day to win the game against Bradley, uh, he just made two in a row. All of a sudden, if he starts making free throws and then wanting to get to the free throw line, yeah. that changes how he is in the low post, how guys can throw the ball, how aggressive he is attacking the rim. Only 17 games played last year for Tillman due to a foot injury. Coming out of East St. Louis. Spent some time at La Lumiere in Indiana. In prep school. Bailey the board. Missouri 30% from the floor. 0 for 5 from deep. Here's Viscovi. Tillman, one of the best rebounders in the SEC. Drew Smith and Mark Smith have combined to go one for seven in this game. Here's Mitchell Smith. None related, but Mitchell Smith throws in a three. Good sharing of the basketball by Drew Smith, but if I am a coach, I would rather Drew Smith take the open shot versus Mitchell Smith, but Mitchell Smith did knock it in. Tillman with the foul 16 feet from the bucket. His second. The kick to Drew Smith. He's not a great three point shooter, but pretty solid if he's got his feet set. Mitchell Smith, a, a low percentage shooter, but he will make a, a few occasionally. Fulkerson came in 91% from the line. You mentioned Grant Williams. And that great Tennessee team from a couple of years ago. And 
Fulkerson used Grant as an example. But he knows that that class built the foundation for Rick Barnes and his program. But it was even more of an example for Fulkerson in terms of developing his game. Watching Grant play. Under two minutes to go in the half. And Tom, if you think of development, you mentioned Fulke is 91% for the foul. Career-wise, he was 74% coming into this year. It's just another thing over the summer guys work on to get better. And he's at 90%. That's fabulous. Missouri got the switch they wanted, and Pinson is able to draw the foul on Tennessee's big. Pinson had a great start to his Mizzou career, 40% from three. Just the third freshman to go 40% from the floor, 40% from three, and 75% from the line. The other two, Kareem Rush and Brian Brown. Basketball family and a coach's son makes sense. Here's Bailey back on the floor. One of the one of the terrific players in uh, Missouri history. Chicago native played his high school ball at Sensational Simeon Academy. Jabari Parker, Derek Rose, some of the flying Illini, Nick Anderson and Deion Thomas, both from Simeon. Missouri's closed within a dozen. Say it's a good half. Now they get it to ten or under after the domination early by Tennessee. Tennessee's that shot him by 20 percent, and a sicky with the dribble finds the scope. Great Missouri defense, loose ball, and it's found by Drew Smith. Pinson deep three. I'll say wow because it's not his strength. His strength is attacking. He had the balls on the heels just a bit. Don't settle for that long three, especially in the break. Tough to figure, especially with Vescovi in front of him. And now Vescovi bangs one in against him. You know, it's just one shot, Tom. It's just one play. But that quick shot, you don't get a bucket, you don't get a point, and you give up two on the other end. That is a massive swing when you're looking at that score and trying to make a comeback against such a good team as Tennessee. Pinching up Fulkerson. And take your pick. Either Vescovi or Fulkerson got him. They'll say Vescovi and Pinson's got a couple free throws coming his way. And when Pinson hasn't settled for that shot, he, he's now he's four or five from the free throw line. He'll get two more here. He has put some pressure on this Tennessee defense, and that's probably what he's going to have to continue to do in order to get his team slowly back in it. But you got to make free throws, especially at home. At Missouri now nine of 14 from the foul line. Unusual because they're a good free throw shooting team. Last year, school record from the free throw line for Mizzou. Benson gets one of two. And they set a national, I mean, NCAA record. 54 free throws in a row. It's quite incredible. Good chunk of those came in one game against Alabama. Tennessee uses a timeout here. Set us up with 8.2 seconds remaining. Tonight, after we finish up here at Mizzou Arena, the SEC Now team will have a complete breakdown of both of the games from tonight, as well as interviews with coaches and players, a look ahead to Alabama and Notre Dame, I'm sure, as well. Make sure to stay right here on the SEC Network or tune in on the ESPN app. Eight seconds left in the half. Where does Rick Barnes want to go in the half court? Well, it'll, it'll be interesting because Viscovi will probably have the basketball. So he'll dictate. We take a look who's on the floor with him. Again, what we have not yet seen, and I don't know if Springer's out there yet or, or Keon Johnson, is the low post from those two guards. And I don't think they're on there now either.
It was interesting, Rick Barnes told me that because I said, hey, Viscovi, great shooter, hadn't shot much. He goes, yeah, we'd like him to. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I made a statement about his first game when they played against LSU. His very first game, he knocked in six threes. He goes, yeah, we'd like to see a little more. Of that. Fulkerson with three left. Working. Fulkerson with one off the side of the backboard. Deed up that time by Mitchell Smith. Tennessee shoots 56% from the free uh, from the field. Missouri just 32%. And at the half, it's a balls by 13. Let's get you the studio. Here's Peter Burns. They start the second half. Number seven, Tennessee, leading Missouri 38 to 25. The 12th ranked Tigers in danger of their first loss of the season. Tom Hart alongside John Sunbold. Eve Pond's difference maker, Sonny, on both ends. Yeah, he really was, Tom. The, the, the Volunteers started well defensively. They were active with their hands. We know Pons can do it both ends of the floor. Viscovi only took a couple shots, but he hit them from deep. Stretched the, the game out early for Tennessee, and they did what they wanted to do offensively. Shot 54%, and defensively, they were suffocating to this Missouri team. Steals, turnovers, block shots, aggressiveness. Uh, they're putting a statement out there why they're a top 10 team in the country on their first road game of the year. Game summary, it summarizes the game, and that first line tells the story. 54% from the floor for Tennessee. Missouri at just 32%. Mark Smith and Drew Smith have combined for six points here in the first half for the Tigers. Go back a couple games, Tom, and Missouri is uh, last two and a half ball games, nine of 49 from three point line. So below 20%, not getting it done, but Drew Smith's got to be more aggressive with the ball. They've got to find a way to get Mark Smith open for shots. Uh, Henson scored it, but mostly at the free throw line. I think Missouri will make a run. They're at home, even though obviously you have limited crowd. Um, you expect home teams to make a run. We'll see. I'm sure Rick Barnes told his guys start this half as you started the start of the game. Be aggressive defensively. Let's see if they can if Tennessee can build upon their lead rather than let Missouri get on a little run early. Kobe Brown shuffled his feet. And the perfect play drawn up to get the shot blocker in the air, but Missouri turns it over. Not a uh, not a comfort level to play against a guy like Ponce, who many say, and, and I would agree, he's the best defender in the country, guards all five positions. Even if you attack him, you've got to have an offensive player that's comfortable to be able to attack him. Scobie from the elbow. This could be a wildly efficient offense for Tennessee. Yeah, I think if a Scobie, who just did, I mean, he kind of, you know, you run a play, comes off the screen, he, he, he was looking to score. He's the guy that can really stretch a defense that makes, makes it easier on his teammates. I know he wants to run the club as a point guard, and that's true. But if he adds the ability to shoot because he can shoot it, then they are a much more dangerous team on the offensive end. Hans gets whistled for goaltending. Drew Smith gets the bucket. Remember, Sonny, Missouri trail by 19 in the first half, and they had a chance late in the second to get it to 10 when Xavier Pinson came down on a fast break, took a wild three. Tennessee was able to stretch that lead back to where uh, they wanted it at 13. Yeah, good point, Tom. I mean, you get the conference play. You'd hate to say possession to possession at different times of the game, but they can all be important. And right now, Muscovy, it, it looks so comfortable doing what he does. Now another a steal by the balls. Pines finds a streaking Fulkerson and stick jams at home. Tennessee with a mini run to start the second half. They've outscored Missouri 7-2 since the break. That says it all. Tennessee with a comfortable 45-27 advantage on the road at Missouri. Well, Deep Hearts 
on Rocky Top over the holidays. Legendary University of Tennessee multi-sports star Ron Whidbey died last week at the age of 75. Folks, this guy did absolutely everything. Three years on the Tennessee football team in the mid-60s, three years on the basketball team, one year on the baseball team. He even played on the golf team in 1966. He's a Knoxville native who attended Fulton High School, got his first All-America award on the gridiron in 1966, an NCAA statistical champion as a punter. He would go on to punt in the NFL. But before that, his 50 points in a single game against LSU was the school basketball scoring record against Tony White, dropped 51 against Auburn. He was on the Vols' first NCAA tournament team in 1967 with Bill Justice and Tom Borwinkle. He did absolutely everything. <laughs> what an loss. amazing career, a great loss, but a great life lived at the same time. Scobie's had the hot hand this half. Fulkerson with the pump fake. Tough shot over Mitchell Smith. Smith's a pretty good defender. I think Folky probably has an easier shot from 10 feet than trying to drive it, shoot over Smith. Look at Fulkerson for his second on the drive by Mark Smith. Tom, we thought important how Missouri comes out. They probably couldn't have had a worse start to a half than they needed. But guys that have to be aggressive would be one Mark Smith, the other Drew Smith. Mark Smith known as a shooter, a marksman, guy who catches and releases. Every scout report, including Tennessee, when I was at their practice today, is saying make Mark Smith put it on the floor. Make him make a play at the rim. Mark Smith been much he's been much better this season doing that. Getting to the foul line, he shoots a high percentage from the free throw line. So he's got to maintain his aggressiveness because that's the only way he can help his team on that offensive end for the Tigers. Got hung up on the back pick but didn't take advantage. Mark Smith is far and away Missouri's best shooter. 52% from the floor on catch and shoot jump shot. Jump shots nobody else in the same neighborhood. Bugs, lob, Tillman lays it in. Good possession. Uh, ball went side to side. They made the defense move. Bugs is good off the bounce, off the dribble. Good lob. Poked away, Poked away by Mark Smith. It'll stay with Tennessee. Bugs, the uh, transfer from Hawaii, graduate transfer. Assist leader in Hawaii. Solid minutes for Conzo so far this season. They love his work ethic. Doesn't play a lot of minutes, but they're very comfortable putting him in there at any time of a ball game. What's the, uh, you're there, what's the temperature in Columbia right now? About 29 degrees. Interesting. Focus and foul. You guys normal have any for a, normal for a winter night, right? Yeah, you, you have any snow? snow? No, okay. no snow. Well, there's a chance of rain in Honolulu. It is a comfortable 77 degrees right now, 518 <laughs> Hawaiian Standard Time. Fulkerson not happy. Did they, did they give the inbounder the ball too early? Well, Tillman, they had by the way, guy. committed the foul is third, sorry. I think it was Parker Brown checking in, was jogging in. I think he handed the ball. Now we got another issue with the inbounds. <laughs> Tony Green saying, no, you need to stand right here. Keon Johnson will do that. That's where you miss the fans. So if the, fan, if the, you know, the bleachers <laughs> you were pulled all the way out right there, you'd be having, it'd be entertaining. Well, now for Tony Green, it would be. Nice tip in by Josiah Jordan James. His first bucket with all the talent around him. James is a guy who can, he, he's not as reliant on scoring as maybe he would be on other teams. 
Yeah, and he's really, his game is so improved over a one-year period. He came into McDonald's All-American as a freshman. Didn't shoot it very well last year. That wasn't his, he's not a natural shooter. Better this season. Uh, he's got a terrific voice on the defensive end. I mean, Rick Barnes said he'll at least communicate. Uh, he can guard many possessions. And I asked Rick today, I said, you know, he came in as an off guard or point guard. You've had him play a lot of positions. Is that, does that help his knowledge of what you want? And he literally said, John, I think he's one of our better players because of that. He can play any spot. He can defend any spot. He communicates. He talks. He's not concerned about scoring, but he's very capable. He's going to have a terrific career in a ball uniform. Oh, my gosh. Air Pond's at it again. <laughs> He's into double figures. I thought you made a fantastic point in the first half with his shot blocking as good as his hands are. Drew Smith with double dribble. And this guy gets up quick, elevated. Well, it, it, it's the explosive, the, the quickness of how fast he leaves the floor. And again, that's how shot blockers work. That's how you build big leads. The ball's still on a roll today. Major concern for Conzo Martin coming into this game on both ends of the floor. He's the subject of our All-State protection spotlight. Third among active SEC players in career block shots behind Abdul Adu of Mississippi State, Cleveland Brown of Vandy. He is an eraser, and he's been fantastic on the offensive end as well. E. Pons was born in Haiti, adopted at four years old and moved to France with his new family. Great article this week talking about his varied interests. Plays a saxophone, throws some judo down, a fantastic photographer. And he has led this Tennessee team to what will look like a 7-0 start, and they're making people look really smart in terms of this team being picked to win the league. I think what's interesting stat about Pons is that he's made two of two free throws tonight. He has only taken six free throw attempts the entire game. And as aggressive, as quick as he is off his feet, as great as his hands are, obviously on the offensive end, we've seen him shoot a few fadeaways. You would almost think he would use that athletic ability to attack the rim more. He, he, he quickly can go over opponents if he gets to that spot. But if it's the fadeaway jump shot he relies on, he ought to shoot, honestly, five to six, seven free throws a game. But he's had six total for the season. So it's yep. kind of one of those areas you think, okay, use the ability he's got and attack like this and see if he can draw contact. Just like that. And we get a step on Parker Brown. It's the first on Brown. Once you do this as on an offensive end, isolate a defender against a, a guy that's explosive, you've now put a mismatch problem for any defensive team to keep Pons away from the rim. They're going to have to send somebody over uh, because, again, I think he can go over the top of most guys in this league only at 6'6", but because of how quickly he gets off his feet and how high he gets, uh, most defenders will struggle with him. Last year tied C.J. Black with school record 73 blocks in a single season. Pick at the board, he'll bring it up. John, whether or not Missouri has enough to come back in this game, where do they need to be on the offensive end to finish in the top third of the league this year? Well, think of this. Uh, we've seen Missouri so far this season pick up the pace of their offensive end. So, so if you get bogged down in a half-court set, we have witnessed, we saw it last game, if you watch the film against Bradley, this game, they have a hard time freeing up some shooters. But if the pace is good, uh, we saw that against Illinois, uh, the tape against Oregon, uh, Wichita State, if they can get the pace better, then it doesn't put as much pressure in the half-court sets where they get bogged down and like a year ago, they didn't shoot the ball well from beyond three-point line last year. That hurt them. That's become the thing the last couple ball games. They've not shot the ball well outside. Fulkerson had to follow tip on one end, and then Missouri turns it over. It's a 7-0 Tennessee run. And Missouri with now four turnovers in the last 220. 
And as a coaching staff, they know this, and players players probably lose sight of, of where you are and how good you can be or are at a certain point. In a game like this one, it's not over, and they can make a run, obviously. But a coaching staff, and conzo has been through this, they've had some great, great wins. Some of the best wins, really, in the country, but especially in this league, already this season. And you can't forget those games and how well you played versus a game that things aren't going quite as well. I have a hunch we're going to see this Tennessee team do this to a lot of teams. They're so good defensively. It's hard to see in college basketball this season who really is elite outside of Gonzaga and Baylor in that conversation. But yes, the inequality of the schedules and the leagues and I think it's also the hard to judge what is a great win early on. For example, Illinois and Michigan State have both won at Duke. Well, when the season started, those were wildly impressive wins. Now, you kind of shrug your shoulder. You say, well, how, how big a win is that, really? I, I wonder, so I'm asking you, can, can Tennessee be in the same conversation as Gonzaga, Baylor, Kansas? Houston just lost for the first time a couple days ago. I think, as a matter they, fact. I think they can be in a conversation below Gonzaga and Baylor. I think those two teams, great pass, great finish. I think Gonzaga and Baylor are two elite, elite teams. But it, I've watched this Tennessee team now for a few games. It's the first time in person, although I'm not in person, but I went to practice today. And again, I made the comment to Rick Barnes. I'm more impressed with this team, this squad, than I was the Grant Williams squad. And that was a team that won 31 games. Yeah. I always thought that team, I thought that team had a problem guarding certain quickness on with the big guys. Take a look at this pass, the double team. And there's, Tom, let's go back. There's the post up of a big guard like Keon Johnson. They just put him on the low block and say defend him. But I, I do, I think this Tennessee team could be really special just because of all the bodies they have and the different weapons they have on the offensive end. Defensively, they're, they're unbelievable. Mitchell Smith, the board, kept his balance. It's a shame we didn't get Tennessee and Gonzaga on December 2nd. That one was canceled. And then it nearly got rescheduled right before Christmas. But Tennessee couldn't pull off the road trip. And I think that was the game that ended up going to Virginia. Uh, Gonzaga, by the way, if you been watching college football or something else not paying attention John they could be undefeated post to post yeah I think it's Gonzaga in the field uh, a frustrating foul by Mitchell Smith frustration shown there but now again I, I, I do think Kansas has gotten better Baylor obviously is good but Gonzaga I mean again can you take the field against them yeah that's probably the best bet but they are powerful and they're strong they're good. Their guards are terrific. Uh, they've got a, uh, a loyal alum in John Stockton who still does stuff when, when in the summertime when you're, you've got COVID and you can't go some places. Maybe you can go to John's gym and work on some stuff with one of the best point guards ever. Uh, just a rumor that I've heard. But that doesn't hurt. Yeah, well, it doesn't hurt when you do things like that. But they, they are, and you know what, Gonzaga, like they are every year, they're experienced. They get a lot of transfers, get a lot of guys that are around, and then they've got a fabulous freshman Suggs that can, is just a, an elite player. Suggs hadn't played the last couple of games. Bailey drops in a jumper. The toughest game they have remaining will likely be San Francisco or perhaps Baylor. Or pardon me, Baylor. BYU. They've got BYU twice on their schedule, but they've already beaten Kansas, Auburn, West Virginia. They really blew out Iowa. Iowa made it somewhat interesting late and Virginia, among others. Let's go be back on the floor for Tennessee. So many different pieces to this Tennessee team. In order to win uh, at a high level, you have to have a number. Obviously, defensively, you're going to be good. Most teams that, that win at a high number are. You have to have a lot of different options in the offensive end. How many options do you have that can get you 20 points, right? How many different guys that on a certain night when one guy or two guys are struggling, is there another to get you 20? And I look at this Tennessee team, and they may not all get you 20, but they can all get you 15 on a different yeah. night or 18. I mean, you're looking at weapons 
and you go, okay, we're always going to talk about their defense. My goodness, they're an elite offensive team with the weapons they have. And now put that together, and this is a very good defensive Missouri team having a hard time to figure out which, how do you contain and which part do you contain and what openings do you give the volunteer team? And Tennessee's taking advantage, shoot nearly 60% for the night. They have one of the top scoring offenses in the SEC that will have a single player as an individual in the top 20. You could put just about anybody as their leading scorer any night. Tillman got his hand on it. Let's see how Missouri finishes the last 12 minutes of this game. Tennessee team stayed in Knoxville around Christmas time. Their families came to town. They watched movies on the uh, Jumbotron at Thompson Bowling. Watched some NBA action as well. Missouri had their guys uh, take a couple days off, get home if they could. Brown from the free throw line. Almost twice as many turnovers as made field goals for Missouri. Here's Springer from the corner. And the freshman buries his first three of the night. He shoots so well deep. He's known to put it on the floor and get to the paint. But uh, he is a terrific outside shooter. And the balls continue to roll, Tom. E.J. Anasicki commits a foul. Only thing that's gone wrong for Big Orange tonight is a Big Orange blowout. Well, Victor Bailey may be a Texas native, but his family has roots right there in Columbia, Missouri. This is Victor Bailey Jr. His pops, Victor Bailey, started his college career at UTEP and then transferred to Mizzou, where he was a fantastic wide receiver. Take it back to the Omniturf with Kent Kiefer, a quarterback, back in the early 90s in a full furrow field. This was contest against Colorado and they had some great receivers back in the day. Big Mike Madassi is going to lift them up and have a party with them and then went on to play for the Philadelphia Eagles. Randall Cunningham one of his quarterbacks there and finished his NFL career with the Chiefs. Pretty good run. Pretty good family history of athletics his mom Tanya Assistant track coach at Texas was a bronze medal winner in the Olympics in 1996. Perfect 4 4 shooting so far. Yeah, BJ, what they call him. I, I did a couple games when he was at Oregon. Uh, terrific player at Oregon. Uh, didn't get probably as much minutes as he would like, which is normal for most people, but averaged 18 minutes a game, averaged seven a game, played 73 games at Oregon, had eight starts. I had them at Oregon at Houston a couple years ago. He was very athletic, talented. Good relationship between his mom at, when she was a coach, a track coach at Texas. And Rick Barnes was uh, a coach, a basketball coach for the Longhorns. But it was Kim English that had a relationship with the dad. And he was deciding to leave Oregon. They thought Tennessee would be a good place. Practice all season long last year. They knew what they had in him as he sat out and worked with the team. Again, a very, um, I'm not going to say a high-volume guy, but a guy that will search for his shots at times. And you need guys like that on your team because they become aggressive with the ball that allows your offense to move more. There he is, searching. Did I, men did I mention search a little bit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Explain that to the viewers. What do you mean by searching for your shot on the offensive end? Well, so let's say, okay, so Victor had the ball on the left side of the floor, and he brought it up top, and you're going to run a play, but then he, in, instead of running the play, and there's going to be a high pick, he takes it himself off the dribble. Searching would be, can I beat my guy off the dribble and get a bucket? I mean, it's as simple as that. And when you have certain guys like that, what that does is it puts pressure on the defense. Now, again, you don't have to shoot it every time because teammates are going to get open, and that's what coaches are for is making sure you recognize and see things. But it does help to have certain individuals that are aggressive with the ball that are in more of an attacking mode than simply always running the play point A, point B to point C. Yep. And a sickie off the mark, rebounded by Drew Smith.
Missouri just 37 percent from the floor in this game. Mentioned the Bradley game, which turned into a rock fight. Bradley shot 37 percent, and they outshot Missouri by 12 points in that one. The difference is the Tigers were able to get to the free throw line. They went 19 of 26 from the free throw line. The first win by shooting 25% since Princeton in 2000. Missouri not shooting the ball well in this one. They had just 37%. And you, and you won't make excuses because Tennessee's great. It's been eight days since Missouri's played a game. I mean, again, we're, we're in an odd time of, of basketball. And you, you talk about Tom. How many games have you played? Who, who have your opponents been? Uh, now all of a sudden you're starting conference play where really the fun begins. Teams know each other, coaches know each other, they know their habits. Incredible reach by Ponds to get to that shot and block it off of one foot. And then a reach by Drew Smith will be a second. I would love to ask Pinson if he thought there was any way Ponds could get that. Because I'm sure Pinson, if he's honest with you, no, there was no, he was so far from me. Right, yeah. I, I had space. I was just going to toss it up. Ponds cover so much distance in such little time that it, it, it shocks guys when they're trying to make a bucket over the top of it. Stovey's got 14. He's got another free throw coming. I want to follow up what you're saying about the what would be an odd schedule for everybody. I think in addition to that, at the end of the year, you're going to look at wins and losses, and you're going to find in the SEC, just like any other league, it's not necessarily who you play, it's when you play them. Because teams are going to look drastically different week to week this season. Offensive foul on Pickett, that's his third person. And it might be because they're missing a player or two, it might be because they're hot, it might be because they have other issues going on in the program. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, good defense by Pons. Pickett is a downhill player. When he gets it, uh, scouting report says he's going to put it down, drive hard. Now, let's go back to what we talked about the first half in the SEC. One of the teams I'm anxious to see because I think they could be pretty good. They haven't played much. Is South Carolina? They have not really had many games. We've not yet seen an experienced backcourt get to play, and we've talked about every team, but. There's a few teams out here you just don't have any idea where they will be when they get back on the floor. Will, like Rick Barnes said today, he said the, the biggest question you have is are my guys in shape enough when you have to have some of these breaks that, you know, if COVID hits or if something happens. Points watching on the floor now for Missouri. Corner shot, that's where they want them. And it skips off the rim. Frank Martin's team, one and two, they go out of conference this weekend and take on Florida A&M, and that should be a nice warm-up for them. SEC hasn't lost against lower division opponents this, league, this year, not conference, Southland, Swack, and the like. Torrance Watson waiting in the corner. Won't get a chance. It's Mark Smith off the window and a chance for a three-point play. Good bucket by Mark Smith. Terrific high school, school baseball player. He was a pitcher. Uh, a guy that can shoot it. So, again, scouting report says make him put it on the floor. This is where he's gotten better. He's got the size in his shoulders to knock off defenders a little bit. Give him a little bump. In any shooter, if you can give a guy a bump, then that shooter frees his arms up, his shoulder up to get the shot off. But he rarely misses at the free throw line. Good hustle. Stole it right back from Keon Johnson. We got stoppage because the shot clock didn't reset after the free throw. And so Missouri will have a side inbounds. Now they got it at 28. Eight and a half to go. This game likely decided. It looks like, based on everything he's been through, this is a good opportunity for Torrance Watson to show what he can do for Conzo Martin. He's found playing time hard to come by this season. Tillman in the paint. A little leaner. He's got eight. Yeah, Watson, uh, not very many minutes this season. 
streaky shooter. Uh, probably lack of minutes has been obviously they've got a lot of guards, but because he's last year he wasn't very consistent at making the outside shot for Conzo Martin. Hard to get playing time when you're as deep as, as this Missouri team is. Just like Rick Barnes, got to do the little thing to get your playing time. Missed a block out there, but blocking out and playing defense. Josiah Jordan James, three on three. A reach in on Missouri. The Tennessee lead is 24. They've got some Missouri flavor on their coaching staff. We'll take it back old school. And Kimmy English was on the floor, not on the side. Well, Rick Barnes is a rising star in his coaching staff. That's Kim English, who played his college ball right here at Mizzou Arena. Second season as an assistant at Tennessee. You mentioned his ties with Colorado. That helped him get a game earlier this season. Missouri guard from 08 to 12. Back when Missouri was in the Big 12, and boy, they were loaded on a couple of those teams and some deep runs. They cut down the nets a few times. A couple times, I should say, in the Big 12 tournament. Part of the winningest class in program history. A couple slots behind Mr. Sunbold in career points and twice won the Big 12 tournament. High power team he was part of. Kim was always a, a leader on the floor. Uh, one of the communicators, outstanding shooter, uh, was the most outstanding player his senior year, the 2012 uh, Big 12 tournament, the last one that uh, Missouri was in in Kansas City before they moved to the SEC. Outstanding coach. I got to see him work today on the floor with uh, the guys. He still plays with the guys. He gets right out in, in the middle of it. The volunteer player. He's one of the only coaches in the SEC that still looks good in Lululemon. <laughs> Played in the NBA a couple years and went overseas, and uh, he had always wanted to be in the coaching business. So instead of continuing to play and to chase whatever team can sign you and to move wherever country you're going to move to, uh, he decided to get into coaching. And started at Tulsa with Frank Haith, then went to Colorado. Was outstanding there for Tad Boyle, and now with Rick Barnes. Has turned down a couple offers at some schools to move to. Ah, there we go. It's too bad he didn't couple play another couple more right games, there. huh? He well, needed a couple more games. <laughs> 27 points behind you. <laughs> what you guys have in common is you had great teammates and you were part of real teams. And I say yeah, that meaning yeah. there's your number 20 up in the Raptors next to Norm Stewart's 22. In fact, one of Kim's teammates, Marcus Denman, still playing overseas. He's now with the Shanghai Sharks. Sharing a backcourt with Jimmer Fredette. How hard do you think it is to get up a shot when you're playing in Shanghai with Jimmer? <laughs> hey, let's put it this way. With Marcus, who, who was a f fabulous college player and a draft pick by the San Antonio Spurs, if Fredette and Marcus are together, those forwards and center might as well not cross half court line. Right? You just, <laughs> this is all star. You guys stay back there, defend. Just kick it out to us. We're going to shoot. Denman uh, actually outscored Jimmer their last game. I think it was a couple days before Christmas. He had 30. Jimmer, I believe, had 28. You get the Shanghai like news. You get the Shanghai news. <laughs> is that how you're doing it? When you were calling the Korean games hey, over there for baseball, is that what you were doing? Yeah. <laughs> after after a summer of Korean baseball, I found <laughs> how to find overseas box scores very efficiently. You know, English uh, Kim was on a team that went to Elite Eight. Uh, they had great runs. That team, his senior year, uh, that got up to number two in the rankings during the season. Powerhouse squad. Five or six guys played professional basketball. Much like when I played at Missouri, you know, five or six guys that I played with played professional basketball, whether in the NBA or overseas. And those are the teams uh, that, that win a lot of games when you got a lot of great talent. And uh, both cases, talent that stuck around for a while. You guys, four straight Big A championships, 80 to 84. James and Charge. It's Pinson who ends up on the floor. Apologies, I didn't see the call. It was a charge indeed. He may have taken a shot to the face. Ooh. Yeah, elbow. 
right to the beat. Inadvertent, in, inadvertently. Good take by Pinson, though. You know, this is Third. a team, this, this Missouri team, uh, Conzo a year, thought, a year ago thought it, it had a chance to compete for an SEC championship. Uh, a lot of different injuries. Tillman was out quite a bit in the second half of the season. Mark Smith fought a bad back, then he had a bad foot. Uh, this is the team, though, that Conzo still believes, even after tonight, I'm sure, this is just one of those games that happens, that they can compete with anybody because of their depth and because of their ability. Uh, one of the weaknesses that is back on the board that was there last year is they just find these times they just don't shoot it well enough. And if you don't, it puts too much pressure on you on the defensive end. And if it gets contagious where you, as a team, shoot poorly, then, then just too much pressure. Yep. And as you pointed out in the first half, Tennessee's going to do this to some folks this year. Yeah, they really will. Fun team to watch. And Asiki saves it. His sister Nikki was on a national championship team for the Lady Balls in 2008. Off balance and off the back of the rim and a chance for Springer at the free throw line. You know, what did I read earlier this season? Uh, Rick Barnes said he, he plays bully ball, right? He's going to try to stuff it, stuff you and everybody else in the basket. He loves how Springer plays. He loves his toughness. And I think the key to some of these, the, the five-star guys, right? You got Springer, you got Keon Johnson come off the bench. Is the fact that as if I was a parent, I would know that I've got a guy on the sideline, Rick Barnes, who's coached some of the greatest players ever. I mentioned TJ Ford before. He coached Kevin Durant at Texas. Yeah. He's, he's going to make those two guys much, much better basketball players than if he automatically said when they showed up, hey, it's your position, you start, you get to do what you want to do. Their, their careers will multiply just by the time they spend in a ball uniform, whether it's one year, two, or three, or four. Rick Barnes will make their game just jump off the chart. And speaking of Kevin Durant's freshman year, only year at Texas, we got another Kevin Durant-like score at LSU, Cameron Thomas. He's averaging 24 points a game, and that puts him in the company of guys like Mike Beasley, Kevin Durant, Jason Conley, Trey Young, Kedron Clark. Those are all guys who were in that neighborhood. Thomas had 32 last night for LSU. I loved your uh, I loved your interview afterwards, Tom, and you could tell everybody <laughs> what he said on your question. It was it was great. He was in a sicky at the free throw line. I asked him after he dropped 32. Where is your favorite place on the floor to score? He said, anywhere. <laughs> That's confidence. Mark Wise, yeah, Mark Wise brought up, he said, no, you had a run there where you missed a few shots. As a shooter, what's your response? And he is a man of few words. Cam Thomas's response, keep shooting. <laughs> So, okay, so Cam Thomas, he's another bucket getter, right? A, a guy who's yeah. going to search and hunt. So I would say, and I've done one LSU game, where Cam Thomas, where LSU could be really, really good because they've got all the guys around. As Cam Thomas hunts, if he notices teammates as he's going hunting, they will explode offensively. Like, he, he'll always get his number. But if he hunts the bucket, but sees guys as they're getting open because they're so talented. That's what when the guy who hunts baskets and can go out and get you buckets, then your team just explodes on an offensive end. Good win for LSU last night. Took down Texas A&M. To your point, Darius Days had 18, and he hit three threes while Thomas was out there filling it up with 32. There's another guy that can get you 20, right? They they have a ton of talent. Wofford can get you 20. I mean, they, they can go and go and go. Now, can LSU defend well enough? I think they can score well enough. Can they defend well enough to compete either A for the championship or one of the top two or three spots in this room? That, that'll be the question. I think talent-wise, offensively, they've got it. Between, if you just did a straight comp with them in Tennessee, I think they're similar offensively. Although, as you pointed out, LSU has the one go-to guy. But Tennessee, even though they don't have 
great post presence. They have a rim protector in Pons. Even though he's just 6'6", LSU is missing that one piece. Yeah, Pons, uh, nobody has that piece, I don't think, in the, in the country. And so if you're Tennessee, if you're a teammate to Pond, you, 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 you've got a guy on aisle five, right, to clean up stuff. Just, yes. just clean up for me because I've made a mistake on my guy. Go ahead and help me out. And it doesn't matter if it's Schnucks, Gerbs, or Food Line. He can clean up any aisle. <laughs> We got you covered getting ready for a full day of football SEC inside from the championship game here in Atlanta at 8 a.m. Followed by SEC in 60 SEC featured SEC nation. My buddy Jordan Rogers will be there on site 10 a.m. to get you ready for Alabama and Notre Dame. And then Eli Gold will be behind the mic for Alabama hometown radio 4 o'clock Eastern. And everybody will be back to wrap it up with SEC football final at 8 o'clock. Easter or whatever whenever they finish up. Take your spin around the scoreboard. Volunteers in Boone County. LSU mentioned beat a and last night. You watch that Alabama Ole Miss game. Big win for Alabama. Earlier tonight, Arkansas stays undefeated their first real test they go on the win on the road and win at auburn almost scored a hundred in that one sunny and florida putting the finishing touches on bandy late joey brackett sent out his bracketology today he's got five from the sec and tennessee a three missouri a four florida at eight arkansas at eight lsu a nine and alabama on the outside looking in right now with Ole Miss and Georgia both under consideration. How do you handicap it after seeing well, those guys, those names? Yeah, I, I mean, it looks great. I, it's going to be a shuffle board. I, I'm, I'm glad those names are up there for the SEC. I, I think you know, Arkansas was a surprise only because of all the new faces. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric Musselman has done a phenomenal job at putting that squad together with all the new faces. Uh, Florida without Keontae, who's now helping them coach and do some things. Uh, they canceled some of their games after he went down and went to the hospital, and now is okay, sounds like, at least. On the, um, end, on the, on the yeah. sideline for Florida. And we'll get to see what Florida can be without him. Um, they're still talented. They've got a lot of things to do. Again, I, I think because of the oddity of how the season goes tonight. I was impressed the game before us, Mississippi State, who we know Ben Howland, who's one of the great, great coaches. He's got two terrific guards. We know Ben Howland likes size and Adu and Toulouse Smith, two guys at 6'10, 6'11. If they played like they did today, tonight against Georgia, and the guard DJ Stewart and Iverson Molinar score the ball. I think there's going to be a lot of of different things we see in the next two months than we within than we thought what teams were good. I, I just think there's going to be a whole new shift in whether it's rankings, whether it's uh, filling out some brackets, and all those kind of things. Big three for Watson following the Fulkerson dunk. You mentioned Howland, one of six SEC coaches who's gone to the Final Four. Tennessee up 22 here with 250 left. And Michael Schwartz, who's the defensive coordinator for this Tennessee team in many ways, coaching up Fulkerson and Viscovi. Great reading The Athletic this week by Joe Rexrow, detailing where that defense came from. It came from the Seattle Supersonics right after you left, Sonny. <laughs> after I guess it wasn't when I was there. I'm on the defensive end. <laughs> I, well, it could have been. It just didn't happen to be. <laughs> Here's a look at the scoring leaders, four and double figures. So Viscovi and Fulkerson standing there, and, and Michael Schwartz as a defensive coach is going over what missed assignment they just had. Now, I've been 22 years old, and I've been chewed out at the end of a game when you're up 22. 
and coach walks away and you look at your buddy and go, can you believe that? We're up 22 and he talked about my missed assignment. They were worried we we're going to get beat. Here we're killing someone on the road. Let's pack it up, get on that airplane, get back to Knoxville. I'm going to give you the name. I, I didn't have it on hand, so I got to I got to go find it. Sequential ongoing strategies was part of Rex Rhodes article. They call it the ball hawking Doberman defense. And it has ties to the late 80s Seattle Supersonics. Parker Brown with the turnaround. So that would have been Bernie Bickerstaff probably as the head coach. Bernie was a great defensive coach when the old Washington Bullets were in the championship back in the late 70s against the Sonics. Took Does the name Lane Wilkins. All right, this is fantastic trivia, and folks, it'll be obvious that we didn't rehearse this. Does the name Bob Kloppenberg ring a bell? Yeah, it does. I know, I know Bob Kloppenberg, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Schwartz had reached out to Kloppenberg the previous summer because he has his 1989 book, Sequential Ongoing Strategies, Pressure Defense, and he carries the book with him everywhere. And you know how great Klopp felt when he got a phone call from a young assistant <laughs> coach somewhere. <laughs> I dusted off your book, and I believe in what you're, you were doing. And Klopp probably said it works, except at the NBA level, because the dude scores so many points. It's hard to stop people. Yeah. It also help if you got a Sean Kemp in the middle. <laughs> yeah, true. Or Gary Payton. The glove knocked away by Devontae Gaines, and they're going to get him for a foul. Gaines has had a hard time cracking the rotation for Tennessee, as you can imagine, with all the talent they have on the floor. And it'll put Parker Brown at the free throw line. Yeah, be honest, it's a 20 point game here. Uh, you didn't expect to hear Bob Kloppenberg's name in the broadcast tonight, <laughs> did you? Yeah, we, we, don't, uh, we don't rehearse this kind of stuff, Tom. People. <laughs> Might not know that. Jordan that is a name on the floor for now. the past. Wow. Brown makes one of two. What an impressive league opener for the Tennessee Volunteers. Will go to seven and zero on the season. <laughs> Offensive board. Gains with the putback. And I, I, I honestly, I don't know who would have thought we'd see this kind of game. Uh, I thought coming in Tennessee, not by their ranking, but what I had seen. Now, again, they didn't have the resume may of wins against quality teams yet in some of those because they couldn't play them. Didn't get to play Gonzaga, didn't get to play Notre Dame. But what they did to Cincinnati, when I watched that game, I thought, my goodness. Um, but I thought Missouri would be ready. Their big wins, uh, they were terrific against a very good Illinois team. Uh, but a night that, uh, I, you know, the first five minutes dictated this entire game, the way Tennessee came out defensively. And then offensively, they have enough weapons to where they are going to be difficult to defend night in, night out. Tennessee opened up a 23-4 lead. And we got a foul on Missouri's Jordan Wilmore. 7-3 freshman Wilmore. That's you see the width man. of the yeah. You see the width of the body, and you think oh, he's probably about six eight. He's standing next to Plotchich, who's a seven footer, and he's significantly taller than number thirty three. So with the addition of Wilmore, Missouri is the tallest on average SEC team at six foot six inches on the average. But that is one big. Man, I got to be honest. I don't think he should be wearing 32. You know, maybe 72. He's playing <laughs> right tackle. Spent last year in Atlanta at prep school. Bill you know, comes uh, obviously played at Purdue and comes from the Purdue tree. And if you pay attention to Purdue every year, they love big dudes. 
Yeah. They always have big guys. And Consul likes big guys. And he thinks Jordan Wilmore, only a freshman, can help them. He said it's different in the pace that they're playing this season. Uh, with Pinson pushing the tempo. But he thinks there'll be a few games he can help him this year. But over the course of his career, he thinks he can step in and be pretty valuable on both ends of the floor. They'll get Wilmore for a foul here, and that'll put Uros Plopcic only seven foot two forty at the free throw line. Plopcic is sixth seven footer in Tennessee history, the first since the Hammer, Steve Hammer, in the mid nineties. Banks open late in Boone County. Rebound by Wilmore, 7 3 275. Hmm. By the way, Eli Drinkwitz, Missouri football team, is supposed to be playing a game today in the Music City Bowl against Iowa. What a fantastic first year they had. Think they can fit some shoulder pads on Wilmore? <laughs> they ought to take a look, huh? Tennessee's going to leave. With a convincing 20 point victory, the Volunteers will go to 7 0 on the season. And they did everything right tonight. They shot 50% from the floor. They held Missouri to just 36% shooting. And the first road trip for Rick Barnes this season, a success. They got Alabama on Rocky Top on Saturday. Tom Sonny, what do you think? What, I, I, impressive. Uh, we came in thinking this was going to be a close game, two great defensive teams. But the first five minutes dictated. Offensively, Tennessee got anything they wanted to start the game. Defensively, Missouri couldn't stop them and couldn't score on the other end. Great start for the SEC, uh, a road to maybe what a, a, a title could be for this Tennessee team. So it's a 20 point win for Tennessee. E. Pons, wildly impressive on both ends of the floor, but just like any night for this Tennessee team, um, good on both ends and good balanced scoring. Number seven team in the country, and they certainly look like a Final Four squad after their performance tonight, the first road test of the season for the Volunteers. Missouri will try to right the ship this weekend. Their next one up is at Arkansas. For John Sunville, Tom Hart, our fantastic crew. Thank